It's April the 28th. Let's read the Bible. Friends, welcome back to our adventure through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation in just one year. Here we are on April the 28th. We are in the book of 1 Samuel. What a blessing it's been. So good to welcome you back for the Bible reading today. Just a reminder, if you're not able to watch it on video or if you simply prefer to listen to it audio only, all of these Bible readings are available as podcasts. We have them on Spotify, on YouTube, Google Play, all of them from January the 1st until now. So all you got to do, go to Spotify, look up Let's Read the Bible, Google Play, iTunes, Let's Read the Bible. You can download today's reading or any day's reading, and God willing, by the end of the year, we'll have 365 audio readings covering the whole Word of God. So encourage you to do that. Maybe Maybe you'd rather listen to it while you're driving in the car or while you're uh, riding your bike or jogging or something like that. The podcast is available for you. Okay, 1 Samuel, three names. Samuel, chapters 1 through 7. Saul, 8 through 15. We finished that part. Today, David, chapters 16 through 31. We're going to meet this young man. Today, in one of these chapters, the most famous story about David one of the most famous Bible stories of the whole Bible, the story of David and Goliath. So in chapter 16, David is chosen. In chapter 17, he goes down into Eli Valley and defeats Goliath. And in chapter 18, oh my, David got a problem with Saul. We'll see that as it develops. Let's begin to read. First Samuel 16, the Lord said to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? since I have rejected him as king over Israel. Fill your, horn, fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem because I have selected for myself a king from his sons. Samuel asked, how can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord answered, take a young cow with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Then invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will let you know what you were to do. You were to anoint for me the one I indicate to you. Samuel did what the Lord directed and went to Bethlehem. When the elders of the town met him, they trembled and asked, Do you come in peace? In peace, he replied, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and said, Certainly the Lord's anointed one is here before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or his stature because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees, for humans see what is visible, but the Lord sees the heart. Jesse called Abinadab and presented him to Samuel. The Lord hasn't chosen this one either, Samuel said. Then Jesse presented Shema, but Samuel said, the Lord hasn't chosen this one either. After Jesse presented all seven of his sons, Samuel told Jesse, the Lord hasn't chosen any of these. Samuel asked him, are these all the sons you have? Well, there is still the youngest, he answered, but right now he's tending the sheep. Samuel told Jesse, send for him. We won't sit down to eat until he gets here. So Jesse sent for him. He had beautiful eyes and a healthy, handsome appearance. Then the Lord said, anoint him, for he is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully on David from that day forward. Then Samuel set out and went to Ramah. Now, the Spirit of the Lord had left Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord began to torment him. So Saul's servant said to him, You see that an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord command your servants here in your presence to look for someone who knows how to play the lyre. Whenever the evil spirit from God comes on you, that person can play the lyre, and you will feel better. Then Saul commanded his servants, Find me someone who plays well, and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lyre. He is also a valiant man, a warrior, eloquent, handsome, and the Lord is with him. Then Saul dispatched messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son, David, who is with the sheep. So Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a wineskin, and one young goat and sent them by his son David to Saul. When David came to Saul and entered his service, Saul loved him very much, and David became his armor-bearer. 
Then Saul sent word to Jesse, Let David remain in my service, for he has found favor with me. Whenever the Spirit from God came on Saul, David would pick up his lyre and play, and Saul would then be relieved, feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. 1 Samuel chapter 17. The Philistines gathered their forces for war at Soko in Judah and camped between Soko and Ezekah in Ephes Damim. Saul and the men of Israel gathered and camped in the valley of Elah. Then they lined up in battle formation to face the Philistines. Philistines were standing on one hill, and the Israelites were standing on another hill with a ravine between them. Then a champion named Goliath from Gath came out from the Philistine camp. He was nine feet nine inches tall and wore a bronze helmet and bronze scale armor that weighed 125 pounds. There was bronze armor on his shins, and a bronze javelin was slung between his shoulders. His spear shaft was like a weaver's beam, and the iron point of his spear weighed 15 pounds. In addition, a shield bearer was walking in front of him. He stood and shouted to the Israelite battle formations, Why do you come out to line up in battle formation? He asked them, Am I not a Philistine, and are you not servants of Saul? Choose one of your men and have him come down against me. If he wins in a fight against me and kills me, we will be your servants. But if I win against him and kill him, then you will be our servants and serve us. Then the Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel today. Send me a man so we can fight each other. When Saul and all Israel heard these words from the Philistine, they lost their courage and were terrified. Now, David was the son of the Ephrathite from Bethlehem of Judah named Jesse. Jesse had eight sons, and during Saul's reign was already an old man. Jesse's three oldest sons had followed Saul to the war, and their names were Eliab the firstborn, and Benadab the next, and Shammah the third. And David was the youngest. The three oldest had followed Saul, but David kept going back and forth from Saul to tend his father's flock in Bethlehem. Every morning and evening for forty days, the Philistine came forward and took his stand. One day, Jesse had told his son David, Take this half bushel of roasted grain along with these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Also, take these ten portions of cheese to the field commander. Check on the well-being of your brothers and bring a confirmation from them. There was Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David got up early in the morning, left the flock with someone to keep it, loaded up, and set out as Jesse had charged him. He arrived at the perimeter of the camp as the army was marching out to its battle formation, shouting their battle cry. Israel and the Philistines lined up in battle formation, facing each other. David left his supplies in the care of the quartermaster and ran to the battle line. When he arrived, he asked his brothers how they were. While he was speaking with them, suddenly the champion named Goliath, the Philistine from Gath, came forward from the Philistine battle line and shouted his usual words, which David heard. When all the Israelite men saw Goliath, they retreated from him, terrified. Previously, an Israelite man had declared, Do you see this man who keeps coming out? He comes to defy Israel. The king will make the man who kills him very rich and will give him his daughter. The king will also make the family of that man's father exempt from paying taxes in Israel. David spoke to the men who were standing with him. What will be done for the man who kills that Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Just who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The troops told him about the offer, concluding, This is what will be done for the man who kills him. David's oldest brother, Eliab, listened as he spoke to the men. and He became angry with him. Why did you come down here? He asked. Who did you leave those few sheep with in the wilderness? I know your arrogance and your evil heart. You came down to see the battle. What have I done now? Protested David. It was just a question. Then he turned from those beside him to others in front of him and asked about the offer. The people gave him the same answer as before. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, so he had David brought to him. David said to Saul, Don't let anyone be discouraged by him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. But Saul replied, You can't go fight this Philistine. You're just a youth, and he's been a warrior since he was young. David answered Saul, Your servant has been tending his father's sheep. Whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off a lamb from the flock, I went after it, struck it down, and rescued the lamb from its mouth. If it reared up against me, I would grab it by its fur, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. Then David said, 
The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul had his own military clothes put on David. He put on a he put a bronze helmet on David's head and had him put on armor. David strapped the sword on over the military clothes and tried to walk, but he was not used to them. I can't walk in these. David said to Saul, I'm not used to them. So David took them off. Instead, he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in the pouch in his shepherd's bag. Then, with his sling in his hand, he approached the Philistine. The Philistine came closer closer to David with the shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he despised him because he was just a youth, healthy and handsome. He said to David, am I a dog that you come against me with sticks? Then he cursed David by his gods. Come here, the Philistine said to David, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the sky and the wild beasts. David said to the Philistine, you come against me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of armies, the God of the ranks of Israel. You have defied him. Today, the Lord will hand you over to me. Today, I'll strike you down, remove your head, and give the corpses of the Philistine camp to the birds of the sky and the wild creatures of the earth. Then all the world will know that Israel has a God. And this whole assembly will know that it is not by sword or by spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's. He will hand you over to us. When the Philistines started forward to attack him, David ran quickly to the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in the bag, took out a stone, slung it, and hit the Philistine on his forehead. The, so the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down to the ground. David defeated the Philistine with a sling and a stone. David overpowered the Philistine and killed him without having a sword. David ran and stood over him. He grabbed the Philistine's sword, pulled it from its sheath, and used it to kill him. Then he cut off his head. When the Philistines saw that their hero was dead, they fled. The men of Israel and Judah rallied, shouting their battle cry, and chased the Philistines to the entrance of the valley and to the gates of Ekron. Philistine bodies were strewn all along the Sha'arim road to Gath and Ekron, when the Israelites returned from the pursuit of the Philistines, they plundered their camps. David took Goliath's head and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put Goliath's weapons in his own tent. When Saul had seen David going out to confront the Philistine, he asked Abner, the commander of the army, whose son is that youth, Abner? Your majesty, as surely as you live, I don't know, Abner replied. The king said, find out whose son this young man is. When David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul, with the Philistine's head still in his hand. Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? The son of your servant, Jesse of Bethlehem. David answered. 1 Samuel 18 When David had finished speaking with Saul, Jonathan was bound to David in close friendship and loved him as much as he loved himself. Saul kept David with him from that day on and did not let him return to his father's house. Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as much as himself. Then Jonathan removed the robe he was wearing and gave it to David, along with his military tunic, his sword, his bow, and his belt. David marched out with the army and was successful in everything Saul sent him to do. Saul put him in command of the fighting men, which pleased all the people and Saul's servants as well as the troops were coming back. When David was returning home from killing the Philistine, the women came out from, from all the cities of Israel to meet King Saul, singing and dancing with tambourines, with shouts of joy, and with three-stringed instruments. As they danced, the women sang, Saul has killed his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. Saul was furious and resented this song. They credited tens of thousands to David, he complained, but they only credited me with thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul watched David jealously from that day forward. The next day, an evil spirit sent from God came powerfully on Saul, and he began to rave inside the palace. David was playing the liar as usual, but Saul was holding a spear, and he threw it, thinking, I'll pin David to the wall. But David got away from him twice. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with David, but had left Saul. Therefore, Saul sent David away from him and made him commander over a thousand men. David led the troops and continued to be successful in all his activities because the Lord was with him. 
When Saul observed that David was very successful, he dreaded him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he was leading their troops. Saul told, told David, here is my oldest daughter, Merab. I'll give her to you as a wife if you'll be a warrior for me and fight the Lord's battles. But Saul was thinking, I don't need to raise a hand against him. Let the hand of the Philistines be against him. Then David responded, who am I and what is my family or my father's clan in Israel that I should become the king's son-in-law? When it was time to give Saul's daughter Merab to David, she was given to Adriel, the Mahathalite, as a wife. Now, Saul's daughter Michael loved David. And when it was reported to Saul, it pleased him. I'll give her to him, Saul thought. She'll be a trap for him, and the hand of the Philistines will be against him. So Saul said to David a second time, You can now be my son-in-law. Saul then ordered his servant, Speak to David in private and tell him, Look, the king is pleased with you, and all his servants love you. Therefore, you should become the king's son-in-law. Saul's servants reported these words directly to David, but he replied, Is it trivial in your sight to become the king's son-in-law? I am a poor commoner. The servants reported back to Saul. These are the words David spoke. Then Saul replied, Say this to David. The king desires no other bride price except a hundred Philistine foreskins to take revenge on his enemies. Actually, Saul intended to cause David's death at the hands of the Philistines. When the servants reported these terms to David, he was pleased to become the king's son-in-law. Before the wedding, before the wedding day arrived, David and his men went out and killed 200 Philistines. He brought their foreskins and presented them as full payment to the king to become his son-in-law. Then Saul gave his daughter Michael to David and his wife. Saul realized that the Lord was with David and that his daughter Michael loved him and that and he became even more afraid of David. As a result, Saul was David's enemy from then on. Every time the Philistine commanders came out to fight, David was more successful than all of Saul's officers. So his name became well known. He's chosen by the sovereign hand of God. He goes out to battle. And with just one smooth stone, he brings down mighty Goliath. For it is not by spear or sword that the Lord delivers. Victory belongs to the Lord. And then they're marching home. It's been a great victory. Total defeat. Total defeat of the Philistines. And the women are singing. Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. Some little ditty like that. Let me just stop and say, if you can kill 50 men, you're a fantastic warrior. If you can kill 100, you're amazing. If you can kill 500, you're legendary. If you kill 1,000, you are one in a million. I mean, really, if you can kill 1,000, we ought to put you on Mount Rushmore. So it's great. It's fantastic. The sin of envy, the green-eyed monster. It wasn't. It wasn't that Saul wasn't satisfied with the thousand. He couldn't stand the comparison. He couldn't stand the idea that David, who was blessed by God, could do more than he could do. How many people have been destroyed by in the jaundice of the soul? Instead of being grateful for what we have and what God has given us to do, we have our eyes on other people. Envy finally destroyed Saul. It destroyed him spiritually. He destroyed him emotionally. He destroyed him relationally. It's a terrible sin, and it's one we hardly ever recognize. At least, it's easy to see it, I suppose, in someone else. It's hard to see it in ourselves. So, end of the reading for today, but let us pray. God, deliver us from the tiniest little bit of envy and jealousy. Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you. Help us to be grateful for all that you have given us. And Lord, whether you've given our neighbors more or less, help us to understand that the only person we ultimately have to answer to is you. So Lord, free us from bitterness, anger, jealousy, a competitive spirit. Free us from the comparison game. Free us up, Lord, from all that so we can serve you with joy. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go out. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Have a great day. Come back tomorrow. There's a whole lot more 
in the story of David and Saul. God bless. See you then.